All right, today we're going to start our last, thank goodness, unit, and that unit is induction. So let's just jump into it. Okay, we know that if I have a line of wire, the current moving through it, I get a magnetic field around it. That magnetic field at a point here, the distance of R away, is a uh, mu zero over 2 pi r. Okay, this is what we spent the whole last unit talking about. And so the statement that we're going to take away from this is that current carrying wires cause magnetic and we're going to use a B fields. So This raises, at least to me, a question. Will a magnetic field cause a current? Um, and that's what the question of induction seeks to answer. I know I can get a magnetic field from a current, but can I get it to go the other way? So, and I didn't obviously come up with this, but I propose an experiment. Let's take a loop of wire. Okay, that loop comes out of the page at the front, into the page at the back. <clears throat> I'm not great at illustrating things, so let's imagine inside of this loop of wire I'm going to stick a magnet. It's got a north end. It's got a south end. I'm just going to let it sit. Magnet. And what we're going to notice here when this thing just sits inside the loop is that nothing happens. It's very boring. Nothing happens at all. So let's say we take this magnet after nothing happens. And we begin to move the magnet back and forth. And let's say the first time we do this, we just move it out. We pull the magnet out. So, let's change colors and sizes. As the magnet moves, we notice a current in the wire. Okay, and actually, as the magnet moves, Backwards, we notice the current one way, and forwards, we notice the current going another way. So, moving the North Pole out causes current one way, moving the South Pole in causes it another way. This current right here is an induced current. And the primary thing that we notice about this induced current is that we only see this when something changes, when, when the magnetic field because of this magnet changes. So, we see an induced current only when the magnetic field changes. So, let's follow this line of logic a little bit further. If we have an induced current, well, 
Well, we know that currents current is caused by a potential difference. We'll call it an EMF. EMP, EMF. So, if moving a magnet causes an induced current, then moving a magnet causes an induced EMF. And this is where we get Faraday's law of induction. Okay. Faraday's law of induction he wasn't a great mathematician, but he was an exceptional experimentalist. States an EMF, electromotive force, is produced when the number of magnetic field lines. through an area changes. That is a statement of Faraday's law of induction. So what this means, or, or what we have here, okay, number of magnetic field lines through an area, that should take us back um, to Gauss's law to this idea of magnetic flux, that's, you know, B dot DA, that takes care of number of magnetic field lines through an area. So what we have for Faraday's law, and what it means, is that the induced EMF from a changing magnetic field is equal to the change in that magnetic flux with respect to time. And we'll talk, technically that should have a negative sign there, we'll talk about that. What this means is that the magnitude the magnitude of the induced EMF we're just going to use that big E for it, the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic field or the magnetic flux. It's not the change in the field, it's the change in the flux through the loop. Okay. So, another way of saying this, and, and we'll use this formula a lot, is it's so a couple of ways that we can change this flux okay one is to somehow change the magnitude of the B field two is to change the area somehow by shrinking it or making it smaller or moving the coil in and out of a magnetic field and then that dot product there another way to do it is to change the angle in between the magnetic field and the area uh, and this one though we're not going to play with it too much because I, don't know, I think my head would explode if I had to think about omegas in the midst of all of this. We don't want anything to spin just yet. Changing the angle is how generators work. Okay, you take a loop and you spin it in a magnetic field. It produces alternating current. This is Faraday's law of induction. And it all has to do, and the thing that we need to remember the most, is a changing magnetic flux. It's really easy to take a time derivative of something. What we need to do most of the time is just find out how the flux is changing. 
We'll look at that in some examples in tomorrow night's video. What we're going to look at now is what this negative sign is all about. And that brings us to Lenz's Law. He's another person um, that experimented with these things. What Lenz's Law is, and, and this is kind of easy to miss, we want to lump it in with Faraday's Law. Change in magnetic flux over the change in time. What Lenz's law is, is this negative sign, okay? And it tells us that the induced current or the induced EMF opposes, is opposite the change. And so we're going to run through a couple of examples, but basically Lenz's law is telling us that things want to stay the same. If I have a loop of wire and I have a magnetic field moving through that loop of wire, Lenz's law says that however I change that magnetic field, the loop is going to react in such a way as to keep the magnetic field the same. So, um, more drawings. Let's say we have a loop. This is our first one. Okay. Here's our loop of wire. Into the page, out of the page, whatever. And let's say that we have in this direction, not great at drawing, a magnetic field. He points that way, and it's increasing. Okay, The things that we have to look at are not the direction of the magnetic field, but the direction of the change in the magnetic field. The magnetic field is pointing to the right through this loop, and the magnetic field is increasing. That tells me that the change in flux over the change in time has a direction, and it is in the direction of that change. And what Lenz's law says is that the induced magnetic field from the induced EMF, from the induced current, the induced magnetic field, a different color, um, the induced magnetic field points backwards through the loop. It's going to oppose that change. The induced magnetic field wants to fight that. So looking at our loop, the only way to get an induced magnetic field that way is to have a current that runs like that. So it's um, into the page at the top, out of the page at the bottom. But in order to produce this induced magnetic field, a current in that wire has to flow. When I have a flowing current, using our little right hand rule, the direction of that magnetic field from that current has to oppose um, our increase, our change in the flux. Let's look at some more examples. Um, yeah, we'll do it right down here. So here's our loop again. Maybe I'll draw it the right way this time. So let's say we have the same loop, I guess we'll draw it the same way, um, and we have that magnetic field, B, still pointing this way, but this time B is going to be decreasing. When we have a decreasing magnetic field, it's still pointing that way, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So my change in flux actually points in this direction. If that's the case, the induced magnetic field wants to oppose that. If this is getting smaller, the induced magnetic field acts in such a way as to make it larger. So that in induced magnetic field pushes uh, with it, and if we do our right hand rule, sticking our thumb in the direction of the induced magnetic field, the induced current Will, will be the opposite of what the induced current was before. It'll, it'll, come, it'll come out of the page at the top and it will be into the page at the bottom. 
I change the direction, not of the magnetic field, but of the change in the magnetic field. Uh, let's look at two more, and then we'll call it a day. And we'll look at some more examples in, in the next video. So... All right, there's my loop of wire. And let's say this time we have the magnetic field um, and it's pointing, it's pointing in this direction and it's increasing. In fact, what I want you to do is to tell me the direction of the change in flux, the magnetic field that's induced because of that change in flux, and the direction of the current that causes that. And we'll talk about this in class. So I want you to do it for that situation, and I want you to do it for this one, which will be a magnetic field pointing in this direction, but it's going to decrease. So for both of these, I want you to tell me the direction of the change in flux, the direction of the magnetic field, and the direction of the current in the loop that's going to uh, oppose that. That's Linz's law. And so we'll spend a little bit in time uh, of time in class looking at examples of this thing happening. And we'll actually start getting into some, some, some worked out examples of these things.